Today we're taking a look at one of the most anticipated cases for 2021. I think we've had more comments about this case than any other case on the channel probably ever. It's the brand new 14 and a half liter Leon Lee Q58. It's a brand new small form factor case from Leon Lee with loads of features. So we're gonna do the regular gear seekers thing. We're gonna take a really close look at it. So let's dive in. All right, ladies and gents, what you've been asking for, the Leon Lee Q58. As usual, we'll start off with panel removal. This one is uh, not what you're expecting. The top of the case needs to be removed first via this screw here. Uh, if you're wondering what that is on my arm, I had a blood test the other day and it's got a weird bruise. So yeah, I know someone will comment about it, but yeah, I had a blood test. Uh, I'm okay, I'm all good. It's just routine. Right, anyway, pop the top off, loosen up that screw there and push up. The clips are quite tight. I have opened this already and the top panel just lifts away. To get access to the case, it's uh, there's a couple ways you can go about it. Uh, you can remove the panels completely or you can flip them open. We're gonna be removing the panels completely here. This panel removes just, it's magnetic, so it just flips down and then you can kind of slide it off and pop it off. The glass works in a similar fashion, but you need to remove this screw here. Right, this one comes out all the way, and then you can slide the glass panel off. They've done this so the glass panel can't accidentally come off and get smashed. It's a very small glass panel, there's no tint, but yeah, that's, that's the reason why they've done it that way. Lastly, front panel removal. This is optional. You might not even ever need to do this if you're building in this case, but it's the same mechanism. You basically just push it and it all pops off. So yeah, front panel, solid front panel. I mentioned in the intro that this case has a lot of different customization options. Here's one straight off the bat. Now, if you wanted to have, let's say, slide in the TG panel at the bottom, and then you can get the other TG panel at the top and then you have one whole side that is this cool little split TG panel. So you can do that for customization. You can do the opposite of that as well. Let's say you wanted to go all mesh on one side. So you can go all mesh. Don't know why you'd want to do this on this case. We'll, we'll get to that later, but see, all mesh. You can do the opposite of the default configuration. So you can have the mesh at the top and then you can have the TG at the bottom. So it's completely up to you. That's why they've done it like this. So if you're having a not regular type of application and setup, you can just mix and match these panels in any way you like. One of the first things you're probably noticing with this new case from Leon Lee is that the internal layout is very, very similar to the Iconix ZX1, the case that we checked out oh, about a month or two ago. So it's got the same type of sandwich layout with the motherboard that sits on this side. The case supports regular ITX boards and it is an inverted mount. So the board is technically upside down, but that doesn't affect anything in the way of thermals or performance or whatnot. It just is a nice and elegant way to set it up and mount it. The difference between this and the Iconix case though is the included riser cable depending on the model that you purchase. So from Leon Lee, you can get a version of the case that has either a PCIe Gen 3 or Gen 4 riser cable. We're lucky enough to have the Gen 4 version so we don't have to do any BIOS tricky. We can plug stuff in and we should be good to go. Here's something you may or may not know about PCIe Gen 4 riser cables, but Here's something to kind of figure out whether or not it is or it isn't out of the box if it's not labeled. Most of the time, this cable here will be more of a ribbon cable and that is for PCIe Gen 4 signaling. So that's usually the dead giveaway when it's like that. As for power supply support, this supports SFX, L, SFX and regular ATX power supplies. There's an included bracket to convert this for a regular ATX power supply. The way this works is you remove the SFX bracket with the four screws, and then you remove the top of the case. And with this included bracket that comes with the case, you remove the ability to mount a full radiator at the top, but you gain the ability to then mount 
a full size power supply if you remove that SFX power supply bracket internally. Again, yes, you can install an ATX power supply, but with one hand they taketh away and they giveth with the other or vice versa or however you want to say it. There's also an included internal power cable as well. So this will plug into your power supply inside of the case because the power connector is on the rear of the case, much like most small form factor cases anyway. There's a few hard disk and SSD mounting options on this case. So you can mount additional drives to the top if you're using a 120 mm rad. So you've got a mount that's pre-installed here on the case. The other SSD mount that I think is absolutely brilliant is there's a SATA connector in here and all you do is you just drop in your SSD. And there you go, SSD is installed. And if you want to pull it out, you just give it a gentle wiggle and yank it out. But look at that, it, it feels like a, a mobile rack, but for SSDs in a small form factor case. That is brilliant. And lastly, there's another SSD mount on the bottom of the case which leads me into something else about the bottom of the case. If you don't want to fumble around inside of the case, I've almost thought of everything here. To have a thumb screw on the bottom, you loosen up that thumb screw, you slide out this panel, and then you can mount the SSD to the panel outside of the case. And for building, you can get access to the bottom of the power supply to plug stuff in with a modular power supply. That is brilliant. And I mean, there's a whole lot of other uses for it too, but it is very, very clever. Not only is it a panel for you to install an additional SSD and for easy cable management, you'll notice there's some holes in each corner. Now these are for a 120 mil fan because you can mount an intake fan on this panel. And the way this works is you'll notice that that panel actually hangs lower to account for the thickness of a fan as well. So. A lot of detail has been put into the design of this case. As for front panel connectivity, we've got our USB Type-C front panel connector, USB 3.0. There's also front panel audio, which is a combined headphone and microphone jack, and also a block with all the lights and all the switches so that you know your system's on, but you don't have to go and figure out what it all is. The Q58 has a really cool trick up its sleeve, which is something that I think should almost become a standard on small form factor cases, right? So you'll notice the Leon Lee logo on the back and there's this kind of little flap looking mechanism. If we pull this down, you'll notice that there is a PWM and addressable RGB fan hub that is integrated into the case. And what they've done is they've kind of externalized it. So you don't have to go fumbling around trying to plug stuff in. You can quite literally plug it in outside of the case. This is absolutely brilliant. They should be doing this for every small form factor case. And when you're done with it, you just fold it away and it's magnetic. And the magnet's really strong. I can basically drag the whole case with it. On the other end of that RGB and PWM hub, we have a three pin five volt addressable RGB connector that plugs into your motherboard and a PWM fan connector that also plugs into your motherboard as well. The top of the case allows you to mount a 120 mil fan, a 140 mil fan, two 140s, two 120s, a 280 mil AIO, as they're saying. I don't know how true that is, but I mean, it's, it's probably gonna be that way if they're saying it is. A 240 mil AIO, 120 mil AIO, not sure why you'd wanna use a 120 mil AIO in 2021. And this whole bracket can also be removed for easy insulation. So there's four screws in total that hold this in. And I, I reckon all small form factor cases need to follow this, right? So if there's any way to mount anything at the top of the case, the panel needs to be removable. The IQNIX case is like this, a bit more fiddly though, but it is, you know, it does follow a similar principle. So you can kind of mount the whole AIO, whatever cooling you like outside of the case. And then you can just lift the panel up and away you go. As mentioned a little bit earlier with drive mounting, you can mount it to this bracket that's pre-installed here, but I would probably suggest removing it. I don't really see a use case where this drive mounting bracket would be used too much. Taking a look at this bracket now that we've removed the hard drive mounting option probably gives you a better understanding of how this bracket actually works as well. On the off chance of you considering air cooling in this case, the maximum CPU cooler height is 67 millimeters. So 
There's a few options for that, but there's not a lot. I would recommend a liquid cooler for this case. Now, the moment you've been waiting for, GPU clearance. You've got a maximum GPU clearance of 320 millimeters. But let's do the ROG test. We always use one of these really massive GPUs to test fit. And I've, I've already test fit this. And guys, I'm sorry to say that we're just a couple mils off making this fit inside the case. If you wanted to remove the power button at the front of the case, you could probably make it fit, but you wouldn't be able to turn your system on. But yeah, 320 is the max. 30 series ROG cards are a hard pass. They do not fit. Ouch, and I just sliced myself trying to make this fit, but this will not fit. The only included accessories worth mentioning other than that optional power supply bracket that mounts on the top of the case is there are two included magnetic fan filters which you can strategically place around the case. But yeah, it is nice that they did include this as an option to use anywhere you like. I think that's basically everything you need to know about the Q58 for now in terms of its functionality. But let's do a build in it, let's test the thermals, and then I'll let you know what I think of the Q58. Ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed our very first build in the Leon Lee Q58. This definitely will not be our last build. There's a couple more things I want to do with this case and experiment a little. But before all that, let's take a quick look at the thermals. What you're seeing on screen right now is the thermals are quite average. They're, they're not the best with this configuration. There's a few reasons for it. 11900K with the 240mm AIO typically doesn't do too well, as well as having the glass panels at the top, I noticed also affected those thermals as well. I think probably the optimal way to set this case up would be to have the mesh on this side for the GPU and the mesh on the top on the other side for the CPU. All right, let's chat about some of the parts that we use for this build. The CPU is the Intel Core i9-11900K. We put that on the MSI B560i Gaming Edge Wi-Fi. To cool the 11900K, we use the Fantex Glacier One 240MPH in white. The RAM is 16 gigs of G-Skill Triton Z Royal at 5333 megahertz. The GPU is the MSI RTX 3070 Ti Gaming X Trio. All of the fans are the Leon Lee SL120 Uni fans. I have two on the AIO and I put one in that fan mount in the bottom as intake. I did test this in exhaust and it is much better as an intake. So there's that too. And if I miss any other parts, I'll put a PC part picker list down below in the description. But let's chat about the Q58. Now the build quality of this case is really quite good. It's again, very reminiscent of the Meshlicious. Uh, again, and, and I said this in last week's video and we checked out the O11 Air that because 
Sapti or Sunny Side Up is a sister company of Leon Lee, it only makes sense that they use some of the same tooling. Like this panel here, this is basically exactly the same as a Meshlicious down here. So I, I can see why they went with that approach. Building in the case in the order that we built in it is the optimal order to build in it. And building in it is very, very easy. Cable management can be a little bit of a challenge, but that's the same story with every small form factor case. So you know what you're getting yourself into if you're buying a small case like this. It's no surprises, but other than that, the execution here from Leon Lee is phenomenal. They quite literally thought of every single little thing, even creating tiny little cutouts for your screwdriver to get into certain parts of the case. That little RGB and PWM fan hub on the back is brilliant. I don't have heaps to say about it because I think Leon Lee absolutely freaking nailed this case. This is one of the best small form factor cases next to the NR200P. It is it is really, really good. And the funny thing is when the box arrived, we've had this thing sitting here for like, like three or four months and the box is bigger than I thought it was gonna be. And I pulled it out and I'm like, this thing is tiny. It's quite literally the size of a regular shoe box. It is very, very small. My initial idea was to have all white components in here, but here's where my expectations were a little bit let down. But Again, I don't want people to take this the wrong way because this is the story with most small form factor cases as it is. You do make some sacrifices when you shrink everything down. So I didn't look at the specs of the case. I had all the specs, but my idea was, you know, this is a modern small form factor case. That white ROG 3080 would fit in here. It doesn't. The MSI card that I use here with the Gaming X Trio, this is the same size as the 3080 and 3090 Gaming X Trio, this being the 3070 Ti and it, it fits technically, but it sits all the way up against the back of the front panel connectors and everything. Now, I, I didn't mention this earlier, but we actually received a different front panel set of wiring or whatnot with the case that shipped because it was like the prototype pre-production sample. They sent us everything to change this to a retail version and they actually added a couple mil of extra clearance in the front with the new front panel stuff. But even still, like they said that this GPU should fit. You can see it in there, but if you're not confident with uh, really forcing something in there, then I would say use something slightly smaller than this. It is, <laughs> it, it is tight. It's literally sitting right up against there. So yeah, you probably saw it in the clip that I showed anyway. The other thing that's worth mentioning is Leon Lee said that it will support a 280 mil AIO at the top. That's not exclusively true. Uh, I think some 280 mil AIOs might fit, but the ones that I have that have slightly larger end tanks, nowhere near fitting in here. Not at all. I suspect Acertec ones will fit because they, they typically have smaller end tanks. I don't have any Acertec 280mm AIOs at the moment to test. So that's a bit of a bummer and a bit of a letdown. I would have actually gone that way if I had one that fit. I tried fitting a deep cool one, but the end tanks are longer and there was no way that was going to fit. So we'll come back to that in another video if I can get my hands on an Acertec 280mm cooler because like I said, the end tanks are typically a lot smaller than the deep cool ones. So as far as 280 mil from my experience with what I've got on hand, it doesn't fit. But again, overall, the Q58 is really, really good. This one is a definite yes for me. Like, yes, I love it. It's brilliant. It is, it is really, really good. So good work, Leon Lee. This is a very, very nice case. Highly, highly recommend if you're looking at a small form factor case. As far as pricing for the Q58, there's a bunch of different pricing depending on your configuration. So this is the white one with the PCIe Gen 4 riser cable. I'll put that price on screen right now. I think it's 159 US dollars, including tariffs and all that stuff that countries do when they ship stuff to each country. I, I don't know what it is from the top of my head, but I think that's pretty much everything I've got to say about the Q58 for now. But as usual, 
it's time to take a bit of a different look at this case. So let's do that thing that we always do at the end of build videos and case reviews. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> 